You gotta love these guys. They've argued all day that pay disparity doesn't exist in this country in spite of all of the studies by governmental agencies, by their own governmental agencies, the Department of Labor, EEOC, and all the rest, that a woman today can still make 77 cents on the dollar for every dollar that a man earns. They've argued all day. Now they've introduced a motion to recommit that accepts the fact, the existence of these pay disparities. They want to argue that they're exasperated by high energy costs. We grant you that ar argument. But then what do they want to do in their last act as they leave for the August break? They want to suggest that a woman who's been discriminated against, intentionally, unintentionally, discriminated against in pay, paid 77 cents for every dollar, or 20 cents for every dollar, we don't know, that woman is going to have a cap on her attorney's fees. They put it at $1,000 to get your blood rushing. But you know who doesn't have a cap? The employer who discriminated against that woman doesn't have a cap on their attorney's fees. That employer doesn't have a cap of $1,000. Is it $1,000 if it's a complicated case and that woman needs two attorneys or three attorneys or four or five experts to prove this discrimination? She has a cap on those. The employer needs five experts, no cap. Five attorneys, no cap. Your last act of discrimination in denying discrimination is to make sure that they can't recover the wages that are due them, and you ought not to be able to do this. You ought not to be able to do that on the floor of this House. You simply should not be able to do it. This is about whether or not women will have the tools necessary to get rid of the wage discrimination that costs them money every hour, every week, every month, and every year, and it falls them into their retirement. You've heard it here today. It can cost them as much as $2 million in lost Social Security, in lost retirement benefits, in lost wages. And now they want to suggest that those women who may lose $2 million have a cap on their ability to recover. I hope Miss Lily Ledbetter is watching you guys because now she understands what her problem was. And I yield, to my, I yield to the gentleman from New Jersey. The purpose of this amendment is to kill this bill. It says to the woman who makes 77 cents to drive a truck when a man makes a dollar, wait your turn. It says to a woman who shortly out of college makes 90 cents for every dollar a man who majored in the same thing makes, wait your turn. It says to women who've lost $2 million throughout the course of their working careers, wait your turn. If you want our sisters and our mothers and our daughters to wait their turn, vote for this motion to recommit. But if you believe as we do the time is now, vote down this motion to recommit, vote for this bill, and vote for justice for the working women of this country. We yield back. Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker. Gentleman from California. There is no more time. Time has run out. We've seen this discrimination documented time and again in all different kinds of businesses, all different kinds of occupations. It doesn't matter your education or your experience. This discrimination exists. And that we have the opportunity with this vote tonight to put an end to it, to allow these women to enforce existing law. We don't change the law. We give them the right to enforce the law. And that's, if they don't have that right, they have no justice and the law means nothing. And that's why we continue to see tens of thousands of cases of wage discrimination, but women can't afford to go in and recover the wages. I ask my colleagues to vote down this motion to recommit and with great pride vote for final passage of this legislation to end wage discrimination, to end wage discrimination and to recognize and with that vote to recognize the phenomenal work of Rosa DeLauro in seeking out justice for women all across this country, I yield back the balance of my time.